Hi everyone, welcome to GGN, Global Government News. Uh, my website is ggnworld.com. My YouTube channels are ddarko2012 and ddarko2013. And I should have a Twitter link in there as well in the video's description so you can follow me if you want or subscribe. Thanks for joining me. This is part two for today, December 12th. Um, the first video, we talked about how the media is telling the public that the end is near. We're in the final inning. Um, the pandemic's end is in sight uh, and all that stuff uh, because the vaccine's finally here. And then that the vaccine's actually probably not even going to prevent uh, infections. And you're still going to have to wear a mask <laughs> and do all of these things. Um, and, but the best part of that video was where I was talking about how are they going to convince the public. And then they put went through a bunch of different articles, sad stories about how we killed dad by having you know Thanksgiving together. And don't travel and don't do all this. To guilt, pe guilt trip people into... Um, staying isolated and and trusting in the experts and taking their vaccine when they get it uh, and it's all based off these hospitalization numbers uh, scaring the public about the hospitals being overloaded uh, but it's all based off lies they're just purposely doing that um, and the best article is this the john hopkins pulling an article they actually pulled the article because they said it was spreading misinformation for repeating what they said which was that the numbers of uh, deaths are no different than in any other year so there you go so talking about propaganda putting out propaganda to convince people to take the vaccine we're going to start off um, from there which is about psyops so first they'll use public relations or propaganda articles uh, to try to convince the public that this is the right thing to take the vaccine it's safe and then they're going to use the psychological operations or psyops, uh, literally in the UK using the army and that, um, and censorship, uh, in order to put out bad information where people think that it's truth and that it's going to be good for them. And then, of course, censoring, which is what Melinda Gates is talking about here, uh, where you censor any kind of opposing views, anyone that questions this. Uh, like this article right here, free speech is being weaponized. Uh, Columbia Dean, a New Yorker writer, urges for more censorship. That That's what I'm talking about. And then eventually, if people aren't convinced, if not enough people are convinced, well, they'll just force you to take it, mandatory vaccine, uh, vaccinations, which they're already discussing. And they have been discussing about the ethics of it and that. Can your employer make you take it? Uh, they're go Either way, they're going to get what they want. Um... I mean, if they can just steal the elections and, and just railroad the American public, all those people that voted for them, and commit uh, just a massive fraud and nothing happens. And I knew that was going to happen, but it means that they have nothing to lose, that they're, they're not stopping for anything. So, uh, yeah, they'll just force people to take it, co coerce them into taking it. In the UK, military intelligence running a psychological operation on the public to convince them to take the vaccine. Behind the scenes, the Times reported that the British Army has mobilized the 77th Brigade's Defense Cultural Specialist Unit to monitor and counter online propaganda against vaccines. It says the unit was formed in 2010 and worked alongside psychological operations teams in Afghanistan, studying the behavior of the civilian population and giving cultural and linguistics advice to ground troops, according to the brigade's own website. However, according to a number of reports, the unit counts at least one Twitter executive among its ranks and is said to create and manage, create and manage fake social media profiles to shape public opinion. According to a plaque on the wall of its base, um, its specialty is creating behavioral change. It says here that it's, um, their efforts are not being directed at the UK population. Leaked documents suggest that its strategy includes gathering evidence of vaccine disinformation from hostile states, including Russia. And that's, of course, not going to be true. They're just using that as a justification to use it against their own public. You know, they were talking about Afghanistan. That's when they were formed. Uh, that's where they were testing it. And then the soldiers come back and then they do it here. 
um, they were also testing, I think it was the pain ray gun out in Afghanistan. That's where they kind of beta tested it. And then, you know, it's been used here. And they were talking about rolling it out in front of the White House during the riots, the pain rays. I mean, this is crazy because the average American person uh, who's tuned into Fox News and CNN, uh, they, they're not going to get this type of news. They're not even aware that this exists. If they knew that something like this exists, that their government would be carrying out psyops against them, uh, you know, in the comment boards of YouTube or Twitter or something like that, uh, they wouldn't be trusting them that much, and they definitely wouldn't be considering taking an experimental vaccine being rolled out by them and, to a certain extent, being forced on them. Uh, so they have to say, well, this isn't, we're not using it against our own public, our own people. We wouldn't do that. We're using it against those evil Russians, you know, that hijacked the election in, in America. And then, you know, it sounds more legit. You're using it against enemies. And, um, of course, they describe all this, this pandemic, as a, uh, a war. So it's a wartime scenario, which means they can do anything. Anti-vaxxers, and that's what they call anyone who doesn't want to take the coronavirus vaccine. Widely considered selfish and stupid by UK public, says survey. Again, this is a total type of uh, PSYOP example uh, by saying that uh, the majority of the UK thinks that, you know, you're selfish and stupid if you don't want to take this vaccine. And it says that 41% think people who discourage public from getting vaccinated are stupid, and 70% uh, think that they're selfish. So it's not exactly a widely considered opinion, as they said, but that's what they're doing. They're trying to create this um, consensus, false consensus. And kind of on a side note, what I've noticed the media doing is attacking the messenger and trying to make them look like, or just basically attack their looks. Uh, instead of um, addressing the issue at hand, I think the best example was the whole uh, election scenario where they were attacking Giuliani. And I watched the speech that he gave, and I was like, "Man, that dude is sweating. They must have like the, you know, sweating, sweating." I'm like, you know, they're going to talk about that in the media. That's all they're going to focus on, and they did. And um, uh, just I think the other woman that was talking, saying that she looked like a character from Saturday Night Live. Uh, just trying to discredit what they're actually saying. So by calling anti-vaxxers uh, stupid and selfish, um, it gets people to think the general population to not look at their message and get distracted by all of the nonsense that they're talking about, about their hairdos or something. And that's what PSYOPs are all about, trolls, uh, these uh, PSYOP groups that go on and the comment boards and stuff. They know what they're doing and how to attack people to discredit them. And I guess uh, it says here, experts warn that this may hinder the fact that these anti-vaxxers are stupid and selfish. Uh, this may hinder efforts to persuade those who are reluctant to get the jab and call for people with doubts to be engaged with, not dismissed. And they're not, they're not in, interested in like some kind of debate or argument or talking about facts and discussion discussion it's just talking about like i said discrediting you or censoring you um, giving you hate speech strikes attacking your website uh, they put out stuff like this bush clinton and obama to publicly get coronavirus vaccine to quell americans skepticism president bush will get in line for his and will gladly do so on camera i heard uh, someone say that you know they're not going to take it. It's probably going to be like, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, salt water or something. I mean, do you honestly believe that these people are going to take these things? Can you trust any one of these people? Uh, but the average, peop the average person, the general population, as they call it, who still believe in the system, that the system still works, uh, they'll say, like, oh, well, Bush, Clinton, Obama, you know, that's Republicans, Democrats, you know, um, if they'll take it, then, you know, I guess I can trust them to, you know, I'll, I'll take it. I mean, there's people that are that naive and they really believe, they think like that. So, you know, this stuff works. Uh, just using like a celebrity type status, uh, people trust them for some reason. And if they don't, I remember hearing this just recently, people um, don't trust the government and the government knows that. So they have to try to convince them by using celebrities and stars and like ex-presidents. Maybe they'll trust them because people trust icons and celebrities more than the government. So you have to trick them, right, to consent. 
Uh, it talks about the media here. Those who rely, going back to this other article, those who rely on social media for significant amounts of information on COVID had a more favorable view of people who discouraged the public from getting vaccinated compared with the general population, which I think they're talking about the general population, a kind of older population that want, just relies on uh, mainstream media for their news. So people who get go online, they get all these old, uh, different types of viewpoints. You're going to be able to hear something outside the mainstream media's narrative, which is pretty scary how obvious it is now. It's bad. There's only one voice, and that's it. Even Fox News is completely exposed uh, as not being, you know, conservative at all. Total globalist. So that's why they definitely attack people online, because they can't control the narrative as much online. British and American state intelligence agencies are weaponizing truth to squash vaccine hesitancy as both nations prepare for mass inoculations in a recently announced cyber war to be commanded by AI, artificial intelligence powered arbiters of truth against information sources that challenge official narratives. There you go. In the last week, the US, the UK, let it be known that they have cyber tools and online tactics previously designed for use in the post-9-11 war on terror are now being repurposed for the use against information sources promoting vaccine hesitancy. Now, we already kind of talked about the UK, but the US, it says here, the US military recently funding a CIA-backed firm stuffed with former counterterrorism officials who were behind the occupation of Iraq and the rise of the so-called Islamic State to develop an AI algorithm aimed specifically at new websites promoting suspected disinformation related to COVID-19. So this guy called for a national debate about new laws to crack down on anti-vaccination conspiracy theorists. So he suggested there should be a discussion about whether people should be allowed to spread misinformation that could cost people's lives. So he basically he was trying to put more pressure on ministers, politicians, to do more to punish people spreading conspiracy theories. And just like with stores about the wearing of the mask, mask mandate where they, the government will fine stores. So they put kind of put them in the middle, make them uh, enforce the law, or they have to pay fines. It says that the legislation would include financial criminal penalties for companies that fail to act to stamp out dangerous anti-vaccine content. They said that uh, the spread of disinformation online presents a real and da present danger to vaccination efforts. It's eroding public trust in any potential COVID vaccine. Army spies to take on anti-vax militants. So this group has been told to take out anti-vaxxers online and on social media. There are ways they have used to monitor and disrupt terrorist propaganda. So they just link you with... Uh, with Al-Qaeda in the Islamic State. If you're uh, not anti-vaxxer, but if you're just skeptical about taking this experimental vaccine. Uh, YouTube. YouTube employs Chinese Communist State Secrecy Bureau software engineers. Most of software engineers for the platform YouTube have formerly worked for the Chinese Communist Party-run institutions, raising the questions as to why a revolving door exists between YouTube and the China-based universities. Probably because they're good at what they do, which is online censorship. Uh, so this guy, uh, one of these engineers that they said, uh, he appeared to reference Chinese People's Liberation Army and a host of Chinese government-led intelligence bodies. And he notes he garnered numerous staff awards for excellent performance. And that's who's working at YouTube. And this is actually YouTube's policy, COVID-19 medical misinformation policy. That's YouTube doesn't allow content that spreads medical misinformation that contradicts local health authorities or the World Health Organization. So that includes doctors who are experts in the field. They can't even make videos. Uh, you don't question the narrative. Facebook says it will provide the authoritative information on COVID vaccines. The WHO taps anti-conspiracy crusader to sway public opinion on COVID vaccine. Harvard behavioral economics professor to lead WHO's newly created technical advisory group that aims to foster public acceptance of COVID vaccine.
Now, undermine the credibility of conspiracy theorists, and when they can't do that, they just assassinate them. Brandy Vaughn, big pharma whistleblower and outspoken critic of vaccine, found dead by her 10-year-old son, which apparently she was aware of. She said she was fearful for her life. This is GGN. Thank you.